<laughs> Kia ora guys and welcome to Study Time's MCAT strategy video where we'll be giving you all the tips on how to ace what is arguably one of the more trickier NCA exams, especially when it is in your very first year of NCEA. I'm joined today by Hattie who will be giving me help in how to explain everything to you guys and give you the lowdown. Cool, so this exam breaks down into two main things. The first thing is applying algebraic procedures. Algebraic procedures are things like factorising, expanding, solving, rearranging, using fraction rules. The trick is, this exam usually won't tell you which of those things to use, so you'll have to figure it out yourself. The second thing is problem solving, which basically means combining multiple skills together. An excellence question is basically just three achieved questions stacked up in a trench coat. Also means you'll have to apply some context and critical thinking to your answers. So you're going to have some questions that are really straightforward and they're going to just say calculate this and that's all you have to do. However, the MCAT also asks of you to do a lot of interpretation and pulling uh, information from the question and how, using that to solve it. Also, you'll have to explain a lot in your own words which really gives context to the concepts that you are explaining. We know that for most of you this is the first MCA exam you'll ever have sat, but if you take on the tips in this video you'll be set to ace it. You might be worried about not having a calculator, but what this actually means for you is that most of your answers will be in nice round numbers, maybe some simple fractions. This is really good news for you because it means if you're getting a really complicated answer, you know you've probably done something wrong. So there are a lot of ways that examiners can phrase the question that all mean the exact same thing. So take the equation y equals 2x minus 1. For example, you can be asked about three different ways for the exact same answer. So for example, you can ask, make x a subject, find x in terms of y, or show how you could use y to find x. All you have to do for this is make x the subject of the equation, which means putting it on its own and taking everything else on the other side of the equal sign. To help you figure out what skill to use, the first thing you should do for any word question is write an equation that corresponds to the information you're given. Figure out the key numbers and what variables they correspond to. For example, if the question said, Charlie has three dogs, you might want the term 3D in your equation. Another example might be, Lucy watches Netflix for twice as long as she studies. So first we figure out what our variables are. Then we look for numbers in the question to see how those variables relate to each other. We know that she watches Netflix for twice as long as she studies, so we know that n is the same as two lots of s. And remember, use every number you're given in the question. One of the more straightforward merit and excellence style questions is that of simultaneous equations. If we go back to our example with Lucy and studying, we already have one equation, which is n equals 2s. If we're then given more information, such as Lucy spends a total of 12 hours both studying and watching Netflix, we then have two equations with the same variables, both n and s. By this, we can use the substitution method to solve the equation. If you can use this method and practice it really well, it's some easy points in the bank. A classic kind of word question that comes up at every grade level is one that involves the idea of consecutive numbers. You should practice writing terms and equations that represent these. For example, the question might say, William adds together three consecutive numbers. Now, we know that consecutive means that each number is one more than the number before it. So to represent this algebraically, we could call these numbers x, x plus one, and x plus two. Then, to represent the situation in the question, we just add them together. If you can get good at interpreting and solving these questions, you're already on your way to some easy marks. Another really common kind of MCAT question is to find either the area or the sides of a rectangle given some information. Now if we go back and we think about the formula for solving for the area of a rectangle, we know that it's base times height. So what this will do is give us a quadratic formula when we times it all together. For example, we might have x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now, to break this down and find what multiplies together to solve for this, that's really just factorising. So, by going through this process, we can see that x plus 1 and x plus 2 would be the sides of our figure. Even though this is a maths exam, make sure that you can interpret your graphs and equations in words as well as algebraically. A common question is to get you to explain what x and y mean in a particular formula. For example, in a question about a ball flying through the air, y would represent how high up the ball is and x would represent how far along it is. Another tip is to make use of diagrams. If you have to answer a parabolic question, sketch out a parabola. Also, if you have a rectangle type question like before, label the sides or the middle, wherever your information is that you've been given. This will really help you understand exactly what's going on and explain the concepts later on in words. Finally, once you have your answer, go back and make sure it makes sense in context. For example, you know that a rectangle can't have a negative side length, so if you've got two possible answers for the rectangle's side length but one of them was negative, still write both of them down, 
but then you'll just say, we can't have a negative number, and you'd give the positive one as your final answer. Hopefully this video has given you all the tools and tips that you need to succeed in your MCAT. Our last tip is to practice old exam questions from old past year's exemplars. Further, what you can do is change the numbers and practice those as well for even more exposure. Doing past papers is a great way to practice for any external, but this paper is a little bit different because it changed a couple of years ago. You can still do past papers to practice, but make sure you pay extra attention to the 2016 and 2017 papers to make sure you know what to expect in your own exam. Also, look at the marking schedules and see exactly how they solve past questions. Why exactly did they take the steps that they did? Also, there are two versions of the MCAT that come out every year, so technically there are four exams that you can look at. Finally, we recommend you check out the MCAT Study Time Walkthrough Guide. It's available either free online or to buy in print, and it's a great way to make sure you know all the content for this exam. Cool, and that's it from us. Good luck for your MCAT, guys.